opportunities for young people to get an education. Uh, when you cut back on those things, to me it's like eating your, your seed corn for the future. Lent's next challenge, convince voters outside Ohio that he has the right stuff to lead the country. At John Glenn High School, Mike Conway, New Center 8, New Concord. Another more controversial Ohioan also claimed the national spotlight today. New Center 8 City Cam reporter Dale Solly reports via satellite in Earth Station 8 that, as expected, Jackie Presser took over the reins of this country's largest union. I have a very fine feeling that I've got enough to win with. I hope that I win unanimously, but at the present time I feel very confident that I'm going to win. It was that feeling that Jackie Presser took into this morning's election, and it was that feeling that led him to the presidency of the largest union in the country. The vote was held behind closed doors, and the results came quickly, taking only 20 minutes. Those results were unanimous. Ironically, Presser took the oath from the man he opposed for the presidency, Union Secretary Ray Schessling. The two vowed to continue to work together to change the union's image and to adapt it to meet the challenge of today's economy. Presser's home state feels that challenge more than most, and at the news conference that followed, he vowed to push hard for Ohio. I have been working, as you know, with the Greater Cleveland Growth Association and the Cleveland Roundtable, and I am on a legislative committee that's trying to get government funding for some of the future development for Ohio. And I will continue to do that in, in my capacity now, too. I don't expect to sever my relationship with the, uh, with the Greater Cleveland Growth Association or the, uh, the task force that I've that I've been sitting out for so long. Overall, the picture Presser painted was a rosy one. The fact is that there are still major problems his people face, and he clearly has his work cut out for him to get the nation's largest union back to where Jackie Presser thinks it should be. Dale Solly, New Center 8, in Scottsdale, Arizona. Cleveland Mayor George Voinovich called the Presser election a breath of fresh air to the leadership of the Teamsters. But not all Teamsters share that opinion. Members of the Teamsters for a Democratic Union criticized Presser's choice, noting that a local union that Presser represents has been without a new contract for over a year. He's talking about organizing uh, uh, white-collar workers and technical employees. Well, when you can't defend your own base where the union's been for the last 70 years, it's going to be awful hard to go and organize those people. Another member of the TDU noted that Presser is under investigation of having ghost employees on a Cleveland payroll and said being under investigation just seems to be part of being president of the Teamsters Union. In Toledo today, a bomb planted in a van outside the headquarters of Teamsters Local 20 exploded shortly after midnight. A car owned by the son of the local president was destroyed in the blast and damage to the building is set at nearly $8,000. No one was injured. Still to come on you, Center 8, two Russian diplomats are being expelled after a run-in with the FBI. And we'll tell you why George Forbes' former bodyguard has been indicted. Stay with us. Nutribel from Lancome makes beautiful... Copier need a repairman standing by for emergencies? Is your copier repairman at your place more than his? Then it's time for a Panasonic. All Panasonic copiers from our reduction copier on down use advanced electronics and are engineered to make thousands of copies without a break. So if your copier repairman's become a permanent fixture, it's time for a Panasonic copier. Move the Canada dry so long the sweet thing is ready, ready to try. A soft drink that's right, ginger ale crisp and light. She's changing her taste, she's raising her sight. I'm making my move to ginger ale so dry. He's making his move and dry is why we're making a move to Canada dry. Aren't you ready for Canada dry ginger ale? The FBI says three Soviet officials have been expelled from the U.S. for spying. Two Soviet intelligence officers and a diplomat were involved in the separate cases. One of them was picked up by the FBI while retrieving rolls of film of classified documents hidden in a tree in Maryland. All three Soviets are believed to have left or to be in the process of leaving the country. Four years ago, Curtis Watkins was involved in a major trial here in Cleveland. It was termed the Carnival Kickback. 
also involved Councilman George Forbes. Both men were found innocent. Today, it was revealed that the former driver and bodyguard for Councilman Forbes is in trouble with the law again. Watkins now works for the city service department and has been indicted on three counts of receiving stolen property, two TV sets, and bar stools. Watkins could not be reached for comment. He is set to go on trial May 23rd. A year-long radioactive nightmare for an Eastside couple is finally coming to an end. Work crews moved in today to begin the four-week job of removing radium-contaminated dirt from the backyard of Eugene and Joan Skiljan. The Skiljans discovered the radium almost a year ago to the day, buried in their barbecue pit. Radiation levels will be constantly monitored while that dirt is being removed. Health officials say area residents have nothing to worry about. A bill that would repeal Ohio's Ferguson Act, which prohibits strikes by public employees, was approved by the Ohio Senate today. That bill, which now goes to the House, would allow public employees to strike with the exception of police and firemen. But the bill does require mandatory contract settlements for the safety forces. Just yesterday, 13-month-old Brandon Hall's doctor sent out a nationwide alert. The liver that he had received in a transplant last week was failing, and his survival depended on a new liver being found. Well, late this afternoon, Brandon's family and doctors got the good news. <laughs> Within the next several hours, surgery is expected to begin on 13-month-old Brandon Hall. A surgical team from Memphis went to Bowling Green, Kentucky tonight to retrieve the liver of five-month-old Amanda Carroll. Tonight at LeBunner Hospital in Memphis, Billy Hall, what, what Brandon's mother, said there was no way she could thank Amanda's family right for what now, they had done. Uh, you know, this afternoon, they, we didn't have a chance. Brandon was dying. And uh, because of, these people were so strong, we owe them so much. You know, there's just no way in the world to say thank you for what they're doing for us. And their grief, you know, they're thinking about somebody else. Earlier in the evening, hospital officials said the surgery had to be carefully uh, choreographed. Uh, Brandon will be prepared for surgery and will begin surgery um, somewhat in advance of their arrival so that when um, they want to minimize the time that the, that the liver is not vascularized, uh, does not have blood flowing through it. Memphis hospital officials expect Brandon to be out of surgery by early tomorrow morning. So once again, hopes have risen here in Memphis as doctors make a second attempt to give little Brandon Hall a second chance at life. Cindy DiBiase for CBS News in Memphis, Tennessee. The Senate today approved a compromise plan that would put the controversial tax withholding on interest and dividends on hold. It effectively repeals withholding, but technically leaves the law on the book. The Reagan administration says it will not support that compromise. The measure now goes to the House for approval. There are a few things more annoying than waiting in a slow line for a teller at the bank. But there is a chance now in the near future that long lines will be a thing of the past. Ameritrust has introduced several computers that are part of a concept they call future banking. By the end of the year, all Ameritrust tellers will have computer helpers that will automatically count money and give accurate information on accounts. In New York, Citibank is earmarked on a policy which has a lot of its customers up in arms. Citibank will not allow you to deal with a real live teller unless you have an account of $5,000 or more. Everyone else has to make transactions by machine, and some people don't like it at all. That, that deposit will be credited just as quickly Sorry, and deferred, just as efficiently as with a child. I a bank where there's still some respect for the consumer. Well, but the bank says it is necessary. Machines, they say, are more cost-effective than human tellers. Up next, we'll find out why Cleveland singles literally flew down to Burke Lakefront Airport tonight. And then we'll see what peanuts, jelly beans, and BPQ beef have in common. Stay with us. The last time you shopped for a suit, a sport coat, a pair of slacks, was it in one retail store, not another? Each store had hundreds of items, but only a few in your size and hardly any you liked. Well, next time, visit the Kuppenheimer Factory Outlet Store. You'll find more styles in your size, all at lower prices than any retailer can afford to offer. You see, we're a factory, and we sell our famous Kuppenheimer quality clothes direct to you. Eliminate the big markups and let you keep the savings. Located in Fairview Park in Bedford Heights. You think you've got lawn weeds? Well, join the club. There you are, clover. 
plantain, dandelion, you name it, all the major ones. At Ortho, we grow them to learn how to kill them. Weed Be Gone does the job. It kills these weeds, roots and all. Look, you'll never meet all these weeds in your lawn. But you'll be ready for the ones you do. When it comes to weed control, it's easy with Ortho. Convenience having a special sale on strawberry ice cream. A big half-gallon carton is now only $1.29. Convenience Food Mart has just what you want. Arby's all-natural breast of chicken sandwich. Set a mouthful. Arby's new chicken sandwich. You set a mouthful. 2,000 of Cleveland's most eligible singles jammed into a giant party at Burke Lakefront Airport tonight. New Center 8's Linda Miller reports that for 10 lucky partygoers, their evening will continue in Atlantic City. Burke Lakefront Airport was packed with singles of all ages, shapes, and sizes. Their goal, to scout out eligible men and women and to take a chance at an overnight gambling trip to Atlantic City. The men and women wasted no time in mingling. Many appeared skilled at the singles scene. We thought we'd ask these people, the experts, what it's like being free and single in Cleveland. I think, I think uh, Cleveland has some of the nicest people I've met. There's a lot of older men than younger. Uh, the choice is kind of slim in Cleveland, I'll tell you. I'm a widow and it's taken a little while for me to adjust and I'm just now getting out and getting started, but it is fun. The party and trip were sponsored by Wright Airlines. The winners' names were drawn, and they had to decide fast because they had to leave straight from the party. Well, I'm dying. I didn't even know I won. I was talking. I didn't know I won. I, I mean, I'm all excited. I set it as a goal. I wanted it, and I got it. I feel great about it. And the group was off to the Golden Nugget Casino in Atlantic City. They'll return at 6.30 a.m. on Friday. Linda Meller, New Center 8, Cleveland. Well, I hope they're going to be coming home to some nice weather. Oh, and some BBQ'd beef, too. <laughs> but uh, this was a rare day. Not only did we have sunshine, but we had a high temperature of 60 degrees in Cleveland, and that is exactly normal on this date. Seldom do we hit the norms. Uh, normal low is 40. We started at 28, but no complaints. And I think tomorrow, friends, we're going to be uh, right about where we were today, 60 or a little better, and I think we'll have sunshine at least uh, the better part of the day. All about it after this. Spring forecast. Higby's Daisy Sale. A downpour of savings. The season's brightest selection. Fashion. Furnishings. Lots of fun things. Your spring fantasies come true. Higby's Daisy Sale. Introducing a Sanyo video recorder with special effects beyond the ordinary. Effects like slow motion and freeze frame, but with all the clarity and none of the usual interference. The new Sanyo with our clear forehead design. Clear special effects at a clearly affordable price. Sanyo's clear forehead design. Now the choice is perfectly clear. Sanyo, the official video products of the 1984 Olympics. Kids need a challenge. Take your time. And parents need to let them go. But there's something families don't need. Better. They don't need caffeine. <laughs> Come on. That's why the 7-Up Company created refreshing light cola in regular and new sugar free. Light doesn't add caffeine like the leading colas. And light has a satisfying rich cola taste. I can't believe you did that. I was worried for a minute. I was worried the whole time. Like regular and new sugar free. The taste proves you don't need caffeine. Well, the big snow has ended over the east now, and I thought we'd take a look at the, where the snow has accumulated uh, throughout the winter on a Thursday night. Normally, we have done that, haven't done it lately, because we've uh, certainly uh, had a, a lack of snow. At Syracuse, New York, uh, the snow has ended there. They're getting into rain now. They've got, had nine inches earlier today. They got 12 from this storm. 
and some tremendous amount of, amounts of snow around Albany and the eastern part of New York and in the Green Mountains of Vermont, up to 15 inches still on the ground there for skiers. If you're headed there for the weekend, why, uh, you might find things to your liking. Uh, in uh, the area just to the north of here, uh, Ontario province, about an inch of snow, and there you see the wide variety, but we're talking now about a, a diminution of snow from over 40 inches a couple of months ago to a little more than uh, a foot there now. And in the western and upper Great Lakes, a couple of inches on the ground. The 11 is out at West Yellowstone, Montana. The 50 is at Stampede Pass in the Cascades of Washington. They head up to I think 89 one time this winter, still 100 plus over the very uh, deep valleys in the Sierra Nevada mountains of California. Some of that snow may be there till the snow starts again next autumn. 60 degrees, the Cleveland high today. Akron Canton had a 56, Mansfield a 57, but a good day except for that strong west wind. Uh, 49 now, wind chill 39, wind has tamed to westerly at 11, the humidity 43%, barometer rising 2993. We've had no precipitation today, pollution standard 41 today, 45 tomorrow. That is considered in the good range. TV8, National Weather Service color radar from Hopkins Airport, uh, showing nothing in the way of precipitation. I think that'll be the case again tomorrow, but by tomorrow evening down in the southwestern counties of Ohio, they may begin to pick up a few showers ahead of a system that uh, shows signs, as I said the last couple of nights, of putting down a few showers in this area on Saturday. We may luck out, and they may be widely scattered. Going to have to reduce temperatures a bit for the weekend, but I think the weekend is going to be one of the better ones we've had of late. 60-28 today, a wide extreme. There we were a year ago. Uh, snow stats remain the same. Uh, skies range widely tonight, and you may have been able to see the planet Venus again tonight because it depends on where you are. At Cuyahoga County Airport, they're overcast. A broken deck at Hopkins. It is perfectly clear in the Akron-Canton area to show how sky conditions vary. It's 50 at Hopkins now, 39 Toledo with a clear sky, and a 51 deep in the south. Uh, sunrise tomorrow, 538. Sunset, 715. And this Sunday now would mark the beginning of daylight saving time. We're going to lose an hour of sleep at uh, 2 a.m. Sunday morning. It's going to become suddenly 3 a.m. Satellite view at 1 o'clock today. Uh, the major uh, concern to us is the cloud deck that is out over the Midwest. Uh, meanwhile, a lot of clear sky deep in the south. That caused temperatures in Georgia again to hit rock bottom last night. The Georgia peach crop really has been hard hit by the freezing temperatures. The main snow in the country tonight is around the Laramie, Wyoming. They're getting two inches of snow an hour. They're up in the high elevations. Yet temperatures to the north of there were up in the 70s today. Mild weather out here. This is the high that favored us today. It's going to be moving along tomorrow. Should give us sunshine early. Some clouds thickening through the late afternoon and evening. And I think we're going to be around 60 to 62 for a high. And then by tomorrow night, the low-pressure area is moving to the south of here, posing the possibility now on Saturday we could see some scattered showers. And I'll update you on that, of course, tomorrow night. In the meantime, winds westerly 10 to 15 tonight and tomorrow. Clear to partly cloudy 33 to 35 tonight. May not even get that cool the way things are going, but for Friday, sunshine, a very pleasant day. The high 60 to 62, clouds increasing through the afternoon and evening. Tomorrow night may even see a few spotty showers, that is by daybreak Saturday. Low tomorrow night near 40, and for the day Saturday, mostly cloudy. The possibility we could see at least spotty showers, the high about 55, and again, I've had to bring these down a peg or two. Sunday, clouds early, but then some sunshine and 52, and moderating early next week back into the 50s perhaps towards 60 by the day Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a good weekend don't, for a barbecue, right? <laughs> okay. BBQ, right. Right. John says the force is still alive and well tonight. They forced a third game against the Chicago Sting. We'll have the exciting highlights in just a minute. Davey, you're still pointing the gun at me. Draw out your gun and come out with your hands up. There will be no deal. The kid's a trigger-happy psycho. Give yourself up. No, 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 no. I'll kill myself first. Do something, George. You left her in there with that mass murderer. Steve's just offered to go to Jack in the Box. Does anybody want anything? Coffee black. Or only one anything. No, I never eat before a shootout. Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman, tonight at 11.30 on TV8. At Red Lobster, we're prepared to make your dinner something special. And that means paying attention to every little detail. Come on in for something special. Prepared just for you. Because we're seafood lovers too. Red Lobster for the seafood lover in you. I'm Bob Albert, Vice President Sales for Sharon Steel Corporation. 
With all the capital we've invested in modern steelmaking equipment at Sharon, who's really responsible for the high quality of Sharon steel? We are! To order your Sharon quality steel, call Bob Maloney in Cleveland or Lynn Houston in Canton. Staying alive, the BG sang it, and tonight the Force did it, beating Chicago 5-4 to, to force game number three Saturday back home at the Coliseum. Cleveland got on the board first. Here's Charlie Green racing in on goal, makes it 1-0. Michael Kahn, the assist for Cleveland. The Sting jumped to a 3-1 lead. This goal by Weiner on a power play tied it at one all. But then Carl Heinz Granitza scored two straight goals. This one just after halftime made it three to one. The force woke up. Great move there by Louis Nanchoff. Makes it three two Chicago lead. Nanchoff got another right here. Nice corner kick from Joseph Illich. It's three three. Force overcame a four three sting lead. Illich makes a perfect kick in between the defender's legs over the goalie's shoulder. Four four. Then Craig Allen got his first of the playoffs and the key, the winning goal on a power play. 5-4 Cleveland, the force got fine. Yeah, Ohio Lotto. The Indians idol tonight, they did play an exhibition. They beat their double-A club down in Buffalo, New York tonight. And in Baltimore, the Birds got the winning run in the 14th inning. Off of this Cal, Cal Ripken ground ball to Bucky Dent. He bobbled it, as you saw. Could not get the double play, and John Shelby scored 3-2 Baltimore. The scoreboard. Seattle wins it two to nothing over Minnesota. Other scores, California got home runs from DeCinze and Lynn. 6-2 victory in the first, and they will play game two later on. In the National League, Montreal beat Joaquin Andujar 6-5, and Cincinnati leads 3-2. They are in the 10th inning of play. NBA playoffs, the Knicks swept their series with the New Jersey Nets, winning 105-99 tonight. Knicks got a balanced attack. Watch Paul Westfall pull that rabbit right out of his hat. Truck Robinson led the Knicks with 22 points. The Knicks now face the Sixers in the Eastern semifinals. Philadelphia concerned about Moses Malone, who has a sore knee. In another game, Denver leads Phoenix 84 to 77. It's not final. Remember when Jack Nicholas bowed out of the Masters because of a bad back? Not a chiropractor in sight at the Tournament of Champions today. The Bear fired a seven under par 65 and leads by two shots after the first round. Akron's Todd Hickman showed his stuff in this 112 pound fight at the Police Athletic League Nationals. The national champion took an easy decision from Vance Campbell. Hickman at 16 has fought more than 180 times since he began six years back. His dad is in his corner but told me Todd might be a bit too advanced for Pac. Uh, all you got to do is just more or less give him his uh, confidence. Uh, the training, he's, he's a little past me now. Uh, uh, I, there's not much you can tell him. He, uh, oh, he, he, he needs a lot of help, don't get me wrong, but the help can't come from me because he's past my point. It's kind of hard to get motivated for because I didn't really want to fight in this tournament. I made a deal with my father, so I'm fighting in it. Huh? I can't say. <laughs> so I made a deal with him to fight in the tournament, so now I'm going to fight in I'll probably get motivated when the time to fight. Remember that name, the name of Todd Hickman come Olympic time in Los Angeles next year. The Tribe 205 tomorrow afternoon at the stadium against Chicago. And that playoff game, Game 3, the Force and the Sting, 8 o'clock Saturday night at the Coliseum. That's sports. The rest of New Center 8 after this. travel as much as I do, you look for a hotel with a difference. It's nice to see you again. Thank you. Here are your messages. Sheraton knows what I want. They give me convenient locations, fine restaurants, and competitive rates. When you're looking for value with a lot of style, Sheraton's the place. Taste the difference Sheraton makes. Call the Sheraton value line. 800-325-3535. So I sent for this feature-by-feature feature comparison of two garden tractors, John Deere, and uh, Simplicity. And I found out Simplicity has an all-steel hood. Uh, Deere doesn't. <laughs> and for a nicer cut, Simplicity's mower floats up and down at the rear on full-width rollers. Deere's doesn't. Do what I did. Call for this comparison. You'll see. Simplicity wants you to call this number. <laughs> John Deere doesn't. 
See simplicity at these fine dealers. It's an around-the-clock special. Hormel Chip Chop Ham, only $1.79 a pound. Lawson, aren't you glad we're here? Finally, tonight, when Jimmy Carter was running for president, peanuts played a big part in his campaign. Ronald Reagan made an issue about his jelly beans, and now New Center 8's Gary Stromberg says presidential candidate John Glenn may use barbecued beef for his trademark. Nice While John Glenn was announcing his candidacy over at John Glenn High School, the fun was already starting over at Muskingum College. Students and residents of New Concord were gathering for a reception on the quadrangle. Lunch was being served for as many as 3,000 people. Barbecued beef was the main course. So people fed up with Ronald Reagan's free cheese could come here and have some of John Glenn's barbecued beef. The college food service prepared more than 700 pounds of barbecued beef for the occasion. Do you think uh, John Glenn will like this meal? This was at his request. They requested a down-home country meal and that's why we are serving what we're serving. But some of the folks who gathered on the quadrangle were less than thrilled with the barbecued beef. This is the science center. I think they mixed it up in the lab just before they brought it out. So John Glenn may not have the recipe for great barbecued beef, but his supporters are hoping that he has the recipe for a successful presidential campaign. Gary Stromberg, New Center 8, New Concord. That's our news for Thursday night. For Tana, John, and Dick, I'm Tim Taylor. Thanks for being with us. Stay tuned now for Mary Hartman. Mary Hartman next on TV8. Don't forget to join us again tomorrow for all of our news on New Center 8 at noon 6 and 11. Good night. Good night.